Hello and welcome to this What's New video for AutoCAD 2015. My name is Greg Benson Shettle for Address Professional Services. Now, from the moment we open up AutoCAD 2015, you'll notice a whole new interface that focuses on giving quick access to your projects, notifications and your collaboration. Now, this has been achieved by integrating the old welcome screen as part of the main interface. If you're familiar with Revit, uh, this has been a natural way of working, and it's good to see that the products are moving forward to a standardized interface. A closer look reveals the familiar quick access toolbar up in the top left-hand corner, along with the application menu. Working across the page, we can uh, quickly gain access to any of our template drawings. Uh, there is a list of the standard AutoCAD ones, and also this would reveal any customer template files that you've actually added in as well. Uh, we have access to our recent documents here, and there are various ways of reviewing this. If we take a look at the uh, menu bar down here, we can go for large icons, just a list, but probably best to keep to the thumbnails with description. Now, if there are any drawings in there that you need constant access to, you can always use this little pin and it will jump it right up to the top and hold it in place. This whole page is focusing on creation of your drawings, but if you want to have a look at some learning videos, click on the learn and the panel slides across to reveal the what's new and the various getting started uh, videos as well. Opening a drawing reveals a new low contrast interface to help reduce eye strain and it complements the traditional dark model space that we're used to. The command icons themselves are basically in the same place as they have been before, but some of them have been upgraded. For example, if we take a look in the layers panel, the actual layers property manager is now a nice large button which makes it easy to get to. Similarly, the make current and match layer uh, icons have been made clearer and easier to find. And even our old favorite match properties is now a nice large icon, making it very easy to see. Looking down in the right hand corner, we can see that the status bar has also been upgraded. We've now got all of the drawing aids gathered together in one complete palette. And the icons are now a bright blue uh, color to indicate when they're on, much easier to see again. We can now actually customize the status bar to choose which of the drawing aids we'd prefer to see. Looking down in the extreme right hand corner, we've got this hamburger menu, click on here, and we have a selection of all of the tools and simply by putting a tick next to the items that we'd like to keep, they appear, and if you don't want them, you can remove them as well. So it means you can really have a concentrated uh, status bar, just providing you with the tools that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. Concentrating on how AutoCAD is actually presented to us, Autodesk have actually improved the presentation of the graphics themselves, and they've now added a line smoothing algorithm to the display. We have control over how the graphics are going to be displayed by looking at the graphics performance. If we do a right click on this icon down here, it opens up the graphics performance tab. And here, for instance, we can switch on or off line smoothing. And there's a host of other enhancements uh, if we're looking at 3D and modeling and textures. This latest version of AutoCAD isn't just about improvement in its looks. They've also improved many of the commands that we use. So let's take a look at those. We now have control badges that display on the dynamic input. Let me explain further. For example, if we take a look at the rotate tool, I'm just going to select this column here and pick on an item. You can immediately see right next to the cursor, we get a feedback of the fact that we are using the rotate tool. A small thing, but it's nice. You may have noticed when I selected that particular column, the column itself looked completely different. And this is another enhancement that Autodesk have done. And when you select an item, like so, not only do we see the traditional grips, it actually changes the color of the geometry that's been selected as well to give us feedback that we have selected 
the pieces of geometry that we're interested in. This new version also gives us new controls on how we can actually select items as well. As you know, we have the traditional green and blue selections. Keep that in mind for a moment, because now what we actually have is lassoes. Now keep an eye on the cursor, and you're going to see either a blue or a green icon appear, depending which way I can move my mouse. Moving over here, it's green, and now I can actually be very selective, and by using a lasso tool, you can create selections around complicated areas. In the opposite direction, we see a blue one, and there it's just those items that are wholly contained within that lasso window. Another new aid we have is Edit Preview. So basically, before we commit to finalizing an edit, we can actually preview what it might look like. For example, if we try the uh, Trim command, looking at these lines here, as soon as my mouse hovers over them, you'll actually see it changes color. We get an X to say, yes, this is what you're going to delete. And if that's what you want to do, you get that confirmation. Nice enhancement. In older versions of AutoCAD, if you ever tried to fillet a polyline arc, Basically, you've got a message saying it can't do this. This has now been remedied. So, for example, I have a polyline here. Um, the corner is a little sharp, so we're going to try to fill it this. Set the radius, select the items, and here you can see, again, you've got that edit preview, and it's showing you that we can now fill it a polyline. 2015 is offering us a range of text enhancements and here's a very nice one. If we go to the annotate ribbon we've now got a new tool in here which is text align and the text align tool will allow us to select various items of text and then line them up in an order that we would like. So let's see how this works. Basically select some items of text select the text to align to, or you can actually point to an area. So if I wanted to align it inside of this area here, spin them around, and now they're all nicely aligned. There are several other text enhancements, and we'll take a look at those in a short while. Let's take a look at a couple of the dimensioning enhancements that we've found. Simple mechanical drawing here. I'd like to bring your attention to uh, what is the current layer, which is on object. And we have the dimensions on a dimension layer. Now, if we want to continue these dimensions, what we can do is use the multi-grip, click on continue, and it's going to carry on. Now, what's clever about this is it's recognizing not only the layer that the original dimension is on, but also its style. So it's keeping that consistent and you don't have to worry about changing the current layer beforehand. Another nice dimension enhancement is now the dimensions are going to concentrate on dimensioning the geometry, not the dimensions. What I mean by this is I can pick on one point, go to pick on another and put the dimension out. So what actually happened here was, even though I was close to this existing dimension line, it didn't click on the end of the line as it has done in the past. That's going to make life a lot quicker and easier. Multi-line text has also had some upgrades. Let's take a look at some of these new features. Got a piece of sample text here. Um, and when I start to edit this, imagine that I had my caps lock on and I didn't really want it on. However, I started typing and it auto corrects them for me. Very nice. Another good one is we can now match properties in text, similar to other word processing packages that you may be familiar with. Here we've got a nice big paintbrush. We've copied a style and now we can paste it onto another area and it matches it. Now here's a good one. Quite often we're having to write lists, so let's start a list. And as you can see, it's auto numbering for us in bullet point style. That's another good one. 
moving down. Very often we've got to find a character if we want to uh, do a squared symbol or a subscript symbol. Now we can highlight a piece of text. And up here we can do subscript. And a second button there gives us superscript. Most of these enhancements will appear in other tools such as dimensioning and multi-leader text that we use throughout our drawings. In a previous version of AutoCAD, we saw the introduction of the geolocation tool. This was available on the insert button and you could bring in a map, but it was there really as a reference only. But now AutoCAD has introduced a capture area. So we, so we can use a traditional window on the capture area highlight the area that we want and this is now available so that we can use it actually inside our layouts so we can start printing the maps as well. Well that's a roundup of the top 10 tips um, but I'm going to leave you with one other new feature that we've got. We've now got an interactive help so if I go to the help tool and I'm going to look for for example the arc command When we find the arc command in the list, click on this. OK, where can I actually find the arc command? In the main content area, you'll see the word find. And if you do, if we click on it, it actually points it out and on the interface. Another great one. With 2015's new low contrast interface, improved graphics, the top 10 commands that I gave you there, the printable previews, this, this 29th release of the world's best-selling CAD solution, AutoCAD 2015, continues to deliver improved tools to make your life easier for detailing and design. For more details on AutoCAD, including targeted design suites, please call address on 023 8086 8947 or why not visit our website at address.co.uk. I'm Greg Benson Shadow. For Address Professional Services, thanks for now. Bye-bye.